Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. So, I'm Luca, and here Nicholas, and we are working on, on this TV series for Rai, it's the Italian television, and it's a, it's a series for uh, kids. So, let's see the first video. <laughs> La giornata è iniziata e l'ora è arrivata, l'ora di iniziare a volare. Okay, it's a TV animated series, 13 episodes for two minutes, and it's a small target for two years ago, two years old. And we are two different formats to, to give to our client, uh, flat and uh, voir also. So we are trying, because I'm the pipeline director and technical director, to um, combine the, uh, a great production with a small uh, budget. So let's go. Uh, we are light and color and we are in Rome and this is a frame. Uh, we work ob obviously with Blender and we are trying to uh, match the 3D with flat, uh, with flat draw. So who we are? Nicholas, come here. Now we work in Rome. We are a great uh, studio in the center of Rome and uh, uh, this are our work. Uh, always with Blender. Utopia, it's a film that uh, was in cinema. We, we made uh, 12 minutes in CGI and like a, a, game, mo a game movie inside the film. Uh, this one is a, a short movie made in Blender with a cutout style uh, with migrants uh, team and uh, about story in a, in a building where there are different culture and with, uh, with the music there are uh, uh, there are good duration. And the author of this series, Judan Lido, is uh, Anna Judicic Dato, uh, and she wrote the, the series. This is the, the screenplay in Italian, of course. And, uh, and I think, uh, Nicolas, I want to say about uh, the team. Yeah, hi guys. I'm Nicolas. I'm from Argentina, but I live in Italy. I work remotely. Uh, they are the lucky guys who live at Rome in the most city, most beautiful city ever. So look at those happy faces, <laughs> because they really live at Rome. I, um, I, work remote, <laughs> I work remotely. So we have Umberto, who is the supervisor of anim He's a super awesome animator, really. Stefania, super awesome animator as well. Um, Fabio, who's the brother of Colin Levy, because he literally looks like Colin Levy, <laughs> but he's not, uh, the, the art director. Guys, if you are watching, because uh, they told me that you are watching, so. Ciao, Francesco. <laughs> Ciao, uh, Stefania, Umberto, Fabio, Caterina. Okay, that's all. Uh, I'm, I did rig and rigs and animation. I'll talk about later about that because it's, it could be a little bit annoying, so I, I, I would try to not do it. Uh, then we have the musician, the other, that's it. This is an early test. Uh, I came to the production afterwards. I, I didn't do this. Um, Luca did the model. Uh, and the rig, yeah. and this was the first trailer, the first plot.
It was the first trailer. Uh, the story is a little bird who's too afraid to go out of the nest. He, he, he doesn't know how to fly, so he never goes out, and his family tries to convince him to fly, and that's the story. It's all about it, uh, all about those things. Now, we have some concept art. Yeah, let's Luca, move. Luca, yeah. your time. OK. Uh, as, a, as a responsible of pipeline and modeling, uh, I try to uh, combine the, the draw of the art director with a 3D a CGI movie. So uh, we start, of course, by, uh, by drawing. And he is the art director, Fabio, uh, Colin Levy Socia. <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, this is the, the environment, so the mode of the, of the series, uh, of course, for kids. And it was so difficult to translate uh, this style in a, a, CGI, a CGI movie. So we tried to combine and, and try to make a lot of tests. So these are the, the poses and the, and the shape of the, the, the main character, Tino. And uh, of course, there are a lot of different uh, shape. Also, uh, in the rig, there are a lot of work to do. And uh, things to do and things to not to do in, in animation uh, and also in the rig with the, in the alley. And uh, also this, this one is the, the parrot, who's like the, the mentor of the, of the movie. And, uh, and nothing. After the, after the, the, screen, the screenwriter, the screenplay, we, we made with uh, Fabio the storyboard. And the uh, difficult thing uh, was, and this because we are now also to producing this, uh, this series, is to combine uh, uh, flat, the flat version and the VR flat, the VR flex, uh, version. So when we are making the, the layout, the, the layout, the layout, layout file, we have to, to set, um, uh, find this, uh, the file. So modeling. This is Tino, the main character, uh, mother of Tino, and uh, Fabio gave us some, some, some advice also for animator. And these are the, the turnaround modeling of the, of the character. So the, the brother, the parrots. At the end, we, we, don't, we, we didn't use the texture for character. Uh, and this one is Tino, the main character. Okay. Animation test, Nicholas. Okay. Um, I'm one of the animators. I'm a the rigger and one of the animators. So this is our, our, these are our early tests. Um, here we were trying to um, find uh, uh, the personality of, of them, because they're all fine model and the uh, picture is all, is all awesome. But then the act director was really precise about how they have to walk, how they have to fly, uh, what about the takeoff, what about the landing. So the, the, anim the awesome animators at Rome were, did, I'm sorry, did the, this early test. Uh, I came after that. I, I didn't do these animations. Uh, after the first trailer, uh, we had to redo all from scratch. I mean, look at redid the model. And I had to do the rigs one by one from scratch. And I'll talk it a little in a bit about that. The part, this is a standard flight, standard flight with a little bit of overlap in the winds. And yeah, he's taking off. OK, this is on, okay. Then some jumps and ways of uh, closing the eyes and lie eyelashes and all those things. Oh, I don't have a, la a laser here. We have to do some overlaps in the, in the tail and the, the hair as well to make, more, make it more organic, of course. Uh, okay, she's singing. We are, uh, we are going to see that later battle. The, the mouth changed its shape into a trumpet because they sing. Uh, that was very tricky to do in, uh, in the rigging phase. I'll show you later. 
his, his brother, okay, he, he, her brother are trying to tell him, come on, come on, let's, uh, let's go, fly, fly. These are his brothers as well. Little brother. Okay. Yeah, these are not randos, of course. These are OpenGL Play Blast test, early test. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should go. Okay. Rick, now. I'm that guy, animator uh, and rigger. The rigs, I will try not to annoy you because this could be very technical things. Uh, I start with Tino. We have some special requests in the feet. We have, okay, foot roll. The ankle has to point towards the body all the time. The knee has to be very flexible. The knee has to point uh, where the pole is. This is all weight painting. I'm not using bendy bones here. Uh, the FK, I'm sorry, the IK has two special options that are a follow body and a stretch. The stretch on and off, like the rigify one, but then we have the follow body one, because when he flies, it, very, it comes handy to, for the animator to, to have the, um, the feet following the body. We have to counter animate or animate twice. Here we have an FK system, but this is an advanced FK, because we still have the stretch, the stretchy option, and the knee, which is very flexible. So it's, it was really hard to achieve these this kind of things. This is all I'm trying uh, to find a pose for the flight. This is the FK method. Uh, so the animator can switch uh, on and off IK, F, uh, FK when he, as he wants. The tail has uh, an overlap system automatically. So you have, with two controls, you can move the entire body. So you can go um, down and you can make the, the tail follow the body on and off, is, a, is an isolate rotation, basically. So with two main controls, you, you can achieve almost everything, every position you want. Then you still have the, the controls, head, neck. The tail has the same thing. You can do uh, things like that for a quick posing on flight. Uh, doesn't give us a, a right overlap. That's, you have to do it by hand. The rigs are very flexible. We have the, the bone disconnected. So achieving those kind of things is, is not so hard. Uh, the face was very tricky. Maybe it was, uh, it was the most difficult part to do because I'm using shape keys, and that's fine. But we're going to see in a bit the, that kind of constraint was really hard to do. Um, the mouth is flexible as well. You can achieve almost every position. But now you're going to see the trumpet, the little trumpet, uh, when the mouse changes its shape, because he sings in some moments. I'm using two shapes here. Uh, okay, this is a shape here. Uh, two shapes, uh, animating the visibility with mask modifiers and drivers. So at the center point, uh, he, he starts to sing, and the trumpet changes shapes as well. Uh, this kind of constraint are very weird to pose, to pose space to local with parent. This was really difficult, but gave us a lot of more flexibility doing location, rotation, and scaling as well. This is too tricky, so I'm not going to explain uh, in detail now because uh, I could talk one hour just for this. So, but you can do almost whatever. I think we have the, yeah, the, the tuft, the, the hair has to point uh, every time towards the camera. So I put a, a bone with a, um, uh, constraint. The bone is always near to the camera, so you are, it's always facing, pointed to the camera. You still uh, can animate it on top of that, of course. I think we have squash and stretch, the very first principle of animation. Uh, this is all shape keys. Uh, but gets the entire body. This is the fun part. The art director asked us to ask me to put some drawings when he closed the eyes, some different drawings. So I, I, uh, I made a panel, a dedicated panel for animators. Uh, the animator grabs the, the, uh, the given bone, uh, put it up, and that specific draw uh, appears just when he closed the eyes. It was really uh, hard to do with drivers because he has two eyes, of course, and the, the, the correct draw, drawing has to appear just when the, the eye is touched and not before. Uh, thanks to Gustav Wilson and his awesome training series about drivers, uh, using some 
tricky maths things, very complicated. Not that hard, but not that easy. Uh, so the animator has to have the possibility of doing whatever he wants in, in any given moment, as you can see now, uh, and with all the shape keys working as well at the same time. It was hard. It really was hard. But it was uh, very fun to do this. this. Maybe the, the, the most fun part was this one. Yeah, I'm just in the, the ring. And his drawings. I think, yeah, Tino is over. And we have the mother. Um, I have two uh, challenges here because the rig is basically the same. But the necklace uh, has to follow the neck and the hips as well. So I have four bones in the background here. And as an isolated rotation, I have follow neck on and off. So the animator doesn't have to counter animate any, any, any time because the necklace, you can adjust it at any given moment. Here, the eyelashes. That was the very, <laughs> very difficult part. I'm not kidding, I'm using 150 constraints. 150 <laughs> constraints. 150 constraints! <laughs> I'm really doing it, because every la uh, the, eyelash are, the eyelashes are separate mesh meshes, sorry, uh, but the eye is uh, controlled by the shape key. So I, I literally got mad about this. Each bone has like 30 constraints, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Uh, that was really hard to do, but it works. So the animator doesn't have to animate on top uh, of, of, the eye, of the eyelid any time. You can do it if you want, but you don't need it. Okay. Uh, the father, the father was fun as well because his eyes are on top of the eyeglasses. So I'm using booleans here. I'm not using, not using the shape keys. Booleans are working really, really nice in the, in the 2.8. Uh, and we have a special level of hierarchy here. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, because you can move the entire body, the, head, the neck, the head, the eyeglasses, the eyes, and booleans, and you can scale it, rotate, and so forth, and the booleans are still working properly. Uh, I really like this, this, this part because it was really fun to do. A uh, lot of trial errors, of course, but it works. The drawings are, work, uh, are not like, like before because the eye, uh, I don't have an eyelid, so I, uh, I had to put the, the eye, a shape key going towards the drawing. <coughs> Sorry about my voice. <coughs> okay, that was for the father. Uh, his brother has this hair, this stuff, and I built an overlap system, an automatic overlap system, because 12 uh, control bones are too much to, to animate. We have very uh, little time to do. So moving that slider, gives you an automatic overlap. And every time that uh, bone reaches uh, a line, the, the whole bones are getting back to the initial position. So you don't have to counter animate that. You can still animate on top of that, of course, but uh, just moving that slide, that, that bone, you, uh, you get an automatic overlap system. How does this, this work? Um, this is a little demonstration. I'm, I'm using action constraint. First, I build an action, an animation, with a nice overlap, okay? You can see the, uh, all the keyframes key here. Uh, when you're happy when you, with your animation, you add another bone, one more bone, and put an action constraint with in, on each bone, uh, put in that animation. Uh, then I, here I have an overlap amplitude with drivers. Uh, tweaking that overlap amplitude gives you more overlap or less overlap. So I'm turning it down here, and the overlap now is less, even less, almost like disappearing. Uh, this is a very interesting way of uh, having an overlap for free. You do it once at the beginning in the animation, and then the animator has, to, has not to tweak 12, uh, 12 uh, bones, because there are 12. Uh, you can still animate on top of that, because uh, with action constraint you can do it easily. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, Luca, Marco. Oh, um, for the renders we use CoreWeb. Marco, can you can you reach us, please? Marco from CoreWeb. It's working. Thanks, Nicholas. Hi. Um, yeah, the technical note about rendering. Uh, just very quick. Uh, at CoreWeb, we always want to uh, give a powerful tool to creators like Nicholas and Luca to achieve their result with the least 
number of clicks possible and distraction possible. So um, what we did with their project for Judel Nido was to have uh, one of our tools uh, embed in Blender with just one button to send all the, all the renderings um, automatically so that you don't have to be distracted from, um, from the project with all the texture packed by them or automatically by the software. And we, uh, we ran their frames over, um, over 500 GPUs simultaneously. Um, and uh, I think we achieved like 1,200 frames in four hours. Yeah, that was the hours. timing, more yeah. or less, yeah. So that was our, our ultimate goal. And uh, we work hard to provide those kind of tools to, to have just literally just one click and the things goes along and those guys were able to see the result immediately. And uh, I hope we achieve that. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it. We thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Coming. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.